Okay, so I did a pretty big commit on the Rust 10x, Rust Web App Production Blueprint. So what I did is a completely rewritten RPC router, where the timestamp to all our entities, and then the request stamp, which is going to allow us to have the duration on the HTTP request. And in this video, we're going to talk about the new cool RPC router, and then we'll have a separate videos for the timestamps. Okay, so let's go back to the code. And now we can see an example of our new cool RPC router. So the project RPC is part of our lib RPC, which is now an app lib, and is completely decoupled from the web. So it doesn't know about Axum or whatever, and could be reused in Tori apps, in job services or whatever. So that is the beauty of JSON RPC, is that it is not tied to the protocol. So now, the cool things about the RPC router is before we had this little toyish macro mapping, but now we have a full RPC router infrastructure. So we create an RPC router, and then we can add the RPC handlers with their name, which is the RPC method, and their handler, which is a function. And the handlers can have different signature. So that works the same thing as Axum handlers, middlewares, tower services, and BV system, and so on. Because now we can see that this one is a parent for create, but we have the list project, which is another type. In fact, it gets better than that. If we go here, we can change the order, press save, still compile. We could, for example, we're going to put it back there. We're going to have a to-do here to make sure it still compiles, but we could remove as many as we want, and that will still compile. But if we put the model manager after the params, press save, and then we get a compiler because we decided in our router layer that params needs to be last. A little bit like Axum, body needs to be last. It's the same one here. And then obviously we can have no params and that is supported as well and it compiles. So that is very cool. And in fact, even to remove this redundancy here where we have both a string and the handler, I created a little macro rules which usually I use, and it just does that, basically, which is uh, RPC router, and then the add with a name, because in macro rules, we get the name. So how does it work? So first, let's uncomment this one, and we're going to go back to where we were with our code below. So the way we implemented that is, first, a signature has two parts, a viable part, zero or more resources, so a CTX will be a resource, and a model manager is a resource, so it's a little bit like the axiom, but rather to be request parts or states. It's called resources in our case. We don't need to make a distinction. And then we have another type of argument, which is always the last, which is zero or one, and that is a params. So for the resources, what we have is the file resources over there, and that is all our resources that are the RPC resources. So every time we call a function, we have an RPC resources, with this data, if model manager doesn't always need to be created, we could put it in an option that will work as well. And then after what we have is the from resources for CTX, from resources for option CTX, and from resources for model manager. So those are the types that are allowed here in the first part of our arguments. You can have zero or more. So that is for the resources. And then the params, we have our params over there. And this is where we normalize our params, our JSON RPC params, params for create, params for update. So for create, just take the data. And then when we have uh, for update, we take the ID and the data. And as long as everything is desirealizable, so if we use a generic type, we need to make sure that it's desirealizable. And then we can implement this trait, it's kind of a marker trait, almost, for this type. And we do not need to provide an implementation because there is already a default implementation provided. But we could also override it to, for example, prevent the options or make this one required or not required or optional and so on. So there is a default that comes with it, but then we can customize the behavior as well. That is a little bit more advanced, we can describe it later. But the cool thing, and where the magic happens, is in our router module. So that is where everything is happening. And so the first one is the RPC handler. And the entry point of everything is 
the RPC handler trait. And it has three generic, the T, which is a resources. So that is a zero to five tuple because here we have our macro rule. I'm going to explain that later. I call it T because we have R for result. So I didn't want to confuse it. And then we have the params, which is either a tuple of zero or a tuple of one for our params. And then we have our result. And the signature here is like that. First, we have a type future that describe our future. It always have to return something that can be serialized. And then our call will take the RPC resources, the one that we talked before, and then we'll take the params, will be an option of the value. So like this, we make sure that at this level, we allow params to be optional, which is part of the JSON RPC spec. And then in this trait, we have a default implementation for into DIN, which basically take whatever implement this trait and turns it into a box of DIN of this RPC handler wrapper trait. So that basically makes it a trait object that can be put into a vector or a hash map or whatever collections. And that is a magic to make sure that we can route different types of functions. And then the only thing it does is create a box new. And then we had this RPC handler wrapper trait, which takes the self, and then we upcast it into the box DIN of the RPC handler wrapper trait. So it's quite a bit, but it does allow after to put that into a dynamic collection. And where everything starts is that this RPC handler can be implemented for a function. So that is how it works. So what this macro does, it does implement the RPC handler for different type of functions where we have a viable number of resources. And then it will implement two variants, one with zero parameters and one with one parameter for the given number of resources. So right now we have five, but if I wanted six, I just put like that, and then I will have six. So five would be enough. And if we look at, at that implementation, we can see that we implement, getting a little bit cryptic here with a macro syntax, but we implement for this type and we implement for F. And the F is the Fn once, where we're going to have the number of T and so on. So that is a trick, is our RPC handlers those are also fn ones, and so we can implement a trait for those. And then we do the rest of the magic to be able to compose it. So that is kind of the power of this implement trait for a function. And then you can have the model of Axum, Bevy, or your own frameworks, or your own lib, like what we have done here. So now, how that is used into our web server, we can look at that. And if we go to our web server, source, web. Now we just have one routes RPC, so we don't need much more. We have the RPC state, so that is the axum state that we're getting from main. And then we have our routes here, so we follow the same kind of pattern over there. That is a axum routes, because now we're inside the web. We're building our RPC router, and as we can see, we can compose them. So we're building a new one, and we're extending it with a task RPC router and with a project RPC router. And then we create the Axum router, which will go to API RPC. It's going to be a post that is paired the JSON RPC spec. We are giving the RPC Axum handler, which is here. We're going to look at it. And then we're giving our state, the RPC state, and we arc our RPC router because we don't need to clone the whole thing. And then in our RPC Axum handler, we are taking the states the CTX, the JSON request, and then in the body, we are prepping everything. And then we are just calling RPC router, call the method name, the RPC resources, and the RPC parent, which is an option of value. And that's it. That is the whole magic of our JSON RPC routing. And again, the beauty of this system, and that is very important, is that the libRPC is fully independent from the web server. So it doesn't know anything about web. And that is the same thing for all of these libs. Eventually, when you have multiple web servers, you might have a web server for the end user and a web server for the DevOps IT. We might have a lib web 
that will have some common axon thing, but all the other libs do not have to know about axon. Now, eventually, we might have some that have a feature of axon, but that is a whole other topic for another day. Okay, hope you liked it. Until next one, happy coding.